Have you ever been reading a script and you sounded a little bit like a robot? You are not alone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can read a script and sound charismatic. The very first tip is how you create your script. Try dictating your script instead of writing your script out. When you dictate the script, you'll speak as you actually speak instead of typing formally with longer sentences. Reading a script that you've originally said is going to make it much more fluent and fluid when you're reading it to the camera. Tip number two, shorter is better. Shorter sentences, shorter words. Someone wrote, once wrote a script for me using the word colloquially, colloquially. I don't even know what that word means, let alone use it in my actual speech. So try to use words that you would actually use. I tried this script five or six different times. Colloquially, colloquially. Colloquially, it never sounded right. I always sounded like a robot. We finally removed the word. And it sounded so much better. Simple words, shorter sentences, and words you would actually say. Three, smile when reading. Okay, I don't want you to smile the entire time while you're reading a script, but smiling actually changes the sound of our voice. Yes, research found that different types of smiles can change the way the sound comes out. So I want you to listen to the difference. So try to close your eyes for a second. Just trust me. I'm going to say the first sentence without smiling and the second second sentence with smiling. So this is from my book. I did this a lot with my audiobooks. While I was reading the audiobook for cues, I with the sentences that got me really excited, the people I was passionate about, people I was interested in, I tried to smile during those sentences. So I'm going to read this first without smiling and then with smiling. Okay. Major League Baseball player Alex Rodriguez also known as A-Rod, played 22 seasons and earned a total of 44... <laughs> this is a big word. Shoot, I broke my own rule. Earned a total of 441.3 million in the league. Okay, now I'm gonna do it with smiling and hear how it sounds different. Major League Baseball player Alex Rodriguez, also known as A-Rod, played 22 seasons and earned a total of 44... See, I told you, gotta get rid of those big words and earned a total of $441.3 million in the league. So hopefully you can hear that that smile adds a little bit of warmth to my voice. So if you are reading something warm or collaborative, you want to be trustworthy, you're better off adding a smile when you actually feel happy, energetic, or passionate. Tip number four, use a microphone that allows movement. So I have been in the terrible situation of trying to read a script into a really a uh, really sensitive microphone. So I couldn't move my head or my body. I couldn't move posture. I couldn't even gesture. I just had to live right into the mic. The moment you limit or restrict your movement, it restricts your voice. It makes you sound more robotic. So my microphone is actually up here. Da, da, da. And that is because this allows me to gesture. I don't knock it over. I can kind of uh, move my body as if I was going to dance. Not that I do that on videos, but I kind of might shift back and forth. I could lean into you. And the mic picks all of that up. So if you can, try to create a setup or a microphone that allows for movement. That's going to add dynamism to your speech. That's going to make it easier to actually read that script. Number five, use gestures. We can hear gesture. In fact, researcher Susan Golden Meadow wrote a beautiful book called Hearing Gesture. That hand gestures aren't just for you to see me. They also change the way my voice sounds. In fact, if I were to try to do this entire video with my hands clasped, no gestures, it would make me sound more robotic. It would limit my voice. It would limit the amount of um, the dynamic vocal power in my voice. The moment that I open up my hands, I gesture, I smile, I head tilt, I lean, that begins to add a lot more depth to our voice. So try to allow yourself to gesture, allow yourself to have movement. That's going to change the way that you sound. Same thing with, this is another big mistake, is I've been often handed a script and that I can't move. It limits my gestures. So if you notice when I was reading, I read it with holding with one hand and gesturing with this hand. So if I were to say Major League Baseball player Alex Rodriguez, also known as A-Rod, that's going to change the sound of my voice. So if you can, even if you're holding a script, hold it off to the side so at least you can gesture with one hand. Number six, power pause. A pause is really what marks true speech. Oftentimes when someone's reading a script, they just barrel on through the words. They don't pause mid-sentence or at the end of a sentence. And in normal conversation, we do have pauses. So right now I'm not reading a script. And sometimes I have to pause to remember what I was going to say, or I'm going to say something powerful. 
or I really want something to soak in. That's a normal part of speech. In scripts, we tend to lose all the pauses. So I want you to add them back in. In fact, if you can annotate your script, add pause lines. I love a double line for a pause line. The way you can think about this is a power pause. So I actually talked about power pausing in real um, speech and conversation in cues. A power pause is when you use a pause to add a little bit of drama. When you use a pause to let someone stop and think for just a moment before you give them the answer. So you could think about adding a power pause mid-sentence. That's when you're trying to create drama. Or at the end of a sentence to let a thought sink in. So mid-sentence would sound like this. I discovered one of the most powerful things about humanity. And it's that the way we signal to others impacts our confidence. It's that tiny little pause sounds a little bit more like real speech. If I were reading a script and I deleted the, I deleted the pause, it would be too long of a sentence. Or you could add a pause at the end of a sentence to let a thought think in. Thought, think, thought, thought, sink in. See, I should be reading a script. <laughs> That's what should happen. I should be reading a script because I wouldn't have so many plugs. At the end of a sentence, you're like letting that so thought sink in really deeply. <laughs> oh, you're letting that thought sink in really deeply, which is like saying, I believe that cues are the universal language of humanity. And the way that I've studied these cues, so you're adding a pause just at the end of a sentence to say that was a big one, right? Like pay attention to that thought. Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna say thought or sink again in this video. Tip number seven, channel someone else. So this actually comes straight from the research. When I was researching for, for cues, so I was studying very highly charismatic people, the researchers found that sometimes when you channel someone else, it helps you speak more fluently. And that's because it gets you out of your own head. And so what they did in this experiment, they had students give a speech. And then when they asked the second round of speech givers to channel Steve Jobs, those speakers were more charismatic. They used more gestures. They were rated more charismatic and they were rated more highly by judges. So is there someone that you can channel while you read your speech? So could you channel how you think Steve Jobs would read a speech? So Major League Baseball player Alex Rodriguez also known as A-Rod, played 22 seasons and earned a total of, let's skip the number. So that's maybe how I, I think Steve Jobs would read it. I don't know. Um, or maybe if I were to channel someone else, like something, something totally different, totally crazy, how would Cher from Clueless read this? Major League Baseball player Alex Rodriguez, also known as A-Rod, played 22 seasons and earned a total of $441.3 million. Okay. All I do there is I just show you how different I can sound just by channeling someone. So channel your role model. How would they read it? That could change your voice, which makes you sound less robotic. Tip number eight, try it four ways. The reason why I share this is because sometimes we can get in a, a like a funk, a vocal funk, where we say something the same way over and over again. One way that you can get yourself out of that vocal funk is try reading it a bunch of different ways. So let's just take a very simple sentence. Okay, let's see. Let's try so let's just try this one. So this is a, a fun fact tip, which is about gaze direction. So let's say that I'm reading this for my audiobook and I'm getting a little stale. It's getting a little funky. So gaze direction. Have you noticed that many leaders use photos of themselves looking up and to the right? Researchers found that in Western cultures, looking up and to the right is associated with positive characteristics. So if I feel like I'm getting a little bit boring with that. Okay, I'm gonna change it so that I have a little bit of gesturing. I might add some emotion. And what, what if I want to say it um, nice and slow, like I'm, like I'm syrupy. So I'm going to try it a slow way just to try to shake it up. Gaze direction. Have you noticed that many leaders use photos of themselves looking up and to the right? Researchers found that in Western cultures, looking up and to the right is associated with positive characteristics. So I don't know if that's better or worse, that's different, right? It sounds less robotic because I got out of my funk. Okay, another way that I could try it is maybe, um, and to be silly, would be uh, to say it like I was a drill sergeant. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yell it at you. Are you ready? Gates direction. Have you noticed that many leaders use photos of themselves looking up and to the right? Researchers found that in Western cultures, looking up and to the right is associated with positive characteristics. Okay, I'm not going to use that one, but it shook it up. Like I liked... I like a little bit of pointing there. I felt like that was, a, that was a good way of doing it. So try it four different ways. Try adding pauses in different places. That's also going to shake it up. Nine, use actual emotion. 
This is the biggest mistake that we make when reading scripts. We strip our emotion. I have worked with so many TED speakers and presenters who get on stage and they say, hi, I'm so happy to be here. When you say I'm so happy to be here, but you don't look happy or you don't sound happy, it makes you sound unbelievable. This is why scripts can sound robotic. It's because you're reading a script that says, hi, good morning. I'm so happy to be here. Today, I'm going to talk to you about an exciting idea. Now, I'm saying the word, but I don't embody any of the emotion. So not only use the facial expressions, but actually use the emotion in your voice. So instead, add, okay, this is happiness and excitement, and it's going to change the world. So maybe I could say, good morning. I am so happy to be here. Today, I'm talking about an exciting idea that's going to change the world. Now, I'm adding more awe, more gratitude, more happiness, but you also can do this with sadness or negativity. So I could even say, like, I've heard heard this happen before where someone's telling a sad story, but they've rehearsed it so many times that the emotion has left it. So they'll say, 10 years ago, I lost someone. No, they say it even more robotic. They're like, 10 years ago, I lost someone who was important to me and it taught me the meaning of gratitude. And you're like, was that sad? It didn't sound very sad. Or versus if I were to add emotion to it, I could say, 10 years ago, I lost someone who was so important to me and it taught me the power of gratitude, right? So I just added in a little bit of that sadness because that's actually what I felt. So think about, you could annotate your script this way of sad or happy. I add smiley faces or frowny faces to my scripts to remind myself, remember, this was a happy story. Remember the happiness. Don't just read the words. Tip number 10, know when to skip a script. So researchers at Quantified Communications, this is a company I love, they use AI software to analyze speeches. And what they found is scripts or reading from scripts can uh, be good for you in some cases and bad for you in others. So here's what they found. And I'm going to read it to you, but I'm going to do it with a lot of emotion. (laughs) Get excited. Okay, so here's what they found. Okay, so here's what they found. They analyzed um, prepared scripts and non-prepared scripts. So they analyzed people speaking on script and off script. They wanted to know what was the difference. So When a CEO went off script, it increased their clarity and trust. But when they used a script, it increased their persuasion and credibility. In other words, when you want to be persuasive and taken seriously and seen as smart, you actually are better off using a script. That's what this research found. But when you're talking or trying to have clarity and trust or openness, collaboration, you're actually better off going off script. So you, when you use a script is almost as important as how. Tip number 11. The half-half approach. So my actually favorite is using this purposefully. So in your points where you want to be persuasive and credible, absolutely script it out. You want to say it exactly right and use the perfect words. That you can have a script for. But when you're trying to build trust or tell a story, go off script. I call this the half-half approach. This means half of your content is scripted. But half of your content is leaving the script and telling the story off script. The way that I do this in my notes, I'll have an entire... A section is scripted out. And then when I get to a story or an anecdote or something that I want to explain extemporaneously, that was a big word. I almost messed it up. If you get to something you want to explain extemporaneously, then you use bullets. So I'll say, you know, I'll have a whole scripted paragraph of my intro because I want to be really persuasive in my intro, but then I'll have an opening story about being a recovering awkward person. And I want that to sound more casual. I'm okay if I don't tell it purposefully. And that adds more trust. So the half, half approach, if you can do it, a little bit of script, a little bit of off script, it's the best way to not sound robotic. This is unscripted. Thank you for watching this video. Give this video a little bit of a like. Give our channel a subscribe and try this with your next script or speech. Are you living up to your full potential? Do you want more? I would love to help you. Get started with my free training and learn more about People School today. Visit scienceofpeople.com slash pschool. Can I tell you one more thing? If you love this video, you might love my book, Cues. Cues is all about the verbal, nonverbal, and vocal signals we are constantly sending to each other. And they are so powerful. In this book, I break down all the cues that you might be getting in your conversations and your interactions. Definitely pick up your copy, Amazon, or wherever books are sold. And if you like Audible books, I also read my own Audible. So go check it out.